Hello team, welcome back. As promised, we're gonna be going over a lots of charts and I'm going to be showing you some charts that may make you upset. And so I just want you to stick with me and I'm gonna be showing you how we can really use these charts to our advantage in determining uh, what's happening in the crypto markets and how it's going to affect XRP. I'm gonna be giving you guys my predictions on uh, a lot of things. Re before continuing, you need to remember what kind of trader you are. Uh, there's people who are traders and there's people who are investors and holders only. And so uh, I'm a trader. So you need to know that right away. If you see me moving up and down, it's because I told you in events, I'm going to be riding this wave up and down. So that's not for everybody. For some people, it's better for you just to buy some XRP and just wait until next year. Throw away the key, forget you even have it. Because some of this may seem confusing when you see me moving in and moving out. This is not for everybody. As I always say in some of my other videos, it's best for you just to stay on the beach while I'm out surfing or while some people are out surfing, you're going to see people moving up and down. The reason I sell XRP is when I buy it back for the same amount of money without spending any more, I'm able to accumulate even more XRP. And that's how I can make money going down. I have an investment bag that's just for holding XRP uh, for whenever that activates. And I have my trading bag. I'm a trader by nature. What I do a lot on this channel is I tell you what's happening, uh, what price action and what I see in price action. But remember, everything you see me say in here is not trading or event a financial or investment advice of any kind. It's just merely for entertainment, comedic, and educational purposes only. I'll be showing you how I draw on price to predict price action. I hope you learn a lot from these videos and learn a lot about how I draw on price action and how drawing on price action for you can help you navigate vo volatile uh, circumstances and volatile trading days to come. I am expecting some very volatile trading days. So let's get into some of these things. What is Tether? Tether is useful for crypto investors because it offers a way to avoid extreme volatility of other cryptocurrencies. Furthermore, having USDT as opposed to the US dollar removes transaction costs and delays that impair trade execution within the crypto market. Tether, coin, Tether tokens can be transactioned, transacted on popular cryptocurrency exchanges that include Binance, CoinSpot, Bitfinex, and Kraken, and many, many others as well. What is the point of a Tether token? USDT offers a way for investors to avoid extreme volatility of other cryptocurrencies. By moving value to USDT, a trader might reduce their risk of exposure to a sudden drop in a price of cryptocurrencies. It is also much quicker and cheaper to transfer Bitcoin into Tether rather than a US dollar. When doing trans when doing transactions, you have Bitcoin and say you're you're in bitcoin but if bitcoin goes up you make some money if bitcoin goes down and you're in bitcoin you actually lose value compared to your local currency the us dollar primarily in america to mitigate that risk when people know bitcoin is going to go down they want to exit bitcoin or sell bitcoin but if you just sell it right into back into a united states dollar you have to pay transaction costs and that that cost can get a little bit expensive and so to avoid those kinds of costs, you just do a trade into another cryptocurrency and people want another cryptocurrency that also isn't falling. So they usually transact it into something called Tether or USDT. According to Forbes, according to Forbes, Tether has been the subject of much controversy since its inception in 2014 with speculation surrounding the validity of their holdings. Until March of 2019, it claimed to be one-to-one -one backed with United States dollar reserves. Tether's website has modified this claim to be instead saying it's 100% backed by, by reserves, meaning non-cash and cash equivalent assets or loans that could be included in their holdings. Earlier this year, Tether settled with the New York Attorney General's office over a case which was reported on back in September of 2019. When it comes to Tether, you, you've got to understand some things. That Tether is being accused of being a fractional reserve type system. And it is. In a lot of ways, it actually is. Because the Tether is free to print as many as they want of Tether dollars. And so when you have a mass of printing, it actually can manipulate the market in ways beyond standard manipulation techniques that has been used in financial uh, financial circles, let's say that. It makes it easier to hide the manipulation in the underlying asset. And there is manipulation, and you guys need to be aware of that kind of thing. 
Let me show you a picture that kind of shows you what I mean. Here's a tweet from Mr. Whale. It says, Bitcoin's price is being fully controlled by Tether, a shady Chinese firm ran by a group of criminals. When they exit scam or are shut down by regulators, Bitcoin will witness an apocalyptic recession. And we know that, and it's been coming, and a lot of the crypto community talks about it, and we know it's going to be exposed for what it is. It's already being heavily investigated, and it's just a matter of time before regulation also regulates Tether. I mean, they're, they're private. They sound official, the U.S. dollar Tether coin. Have a look at this chart. Here we see that every time Tether starts printing or injecting fake money into Bitcoin, Bitcoin rises and rises heavily. And every time Tether stops printing or injecting money into Bitcoin, you can see Bitcoin falling. Somebody had compared these charts side by side with the printing. We can see that printing has a direct correlation on the rise and fall of Bitcoin. This, my friends, is Tether, USDT. We can see how many billions of dollars have been injected into the crypto market. Every time you buy, uh, you transfer money from your bank account, uh, most people will, will automatically start uh, with some kind of major coin, whether it's Bitcoin or something else. And then they later on convert those into Tether as they're deciding which cryptos they're going to be in. Or while they're waiting on the sidelines, billions of dollars are stored in Tether. The truth is nobody really knows if there's really billions of dollars that are actually available or if somebody's just spent all the money and somebody's really, really rich lying on a beach somewhere with your dollars. But if you borrow from Peter to pay Paul and you do it enough times, you create a fractional reserve system. And you can really pull a massive deception. And this has been exposed time and time again throughout the last century with various different uh, money-making scams and money-making schemes. The money really is not there at all. It's kind of like a Ponzi scheme. Nobody has investigated the vaults to see truly if there really is money in those vaults when it comes to Tether. Strange anomalies show up. And we can see things. For example, this is August of just August 10th, massive printing up until August 25th, and a massive drop in the volume of tethers that are available. By controlling the flow of tether, they're able to control the flow of Bitcoin. But these charts are worthless. They can barely give me any data. Even when I zoomed out, it was very hard for me to find consistent transactions. However, I was able to tell that the volume looked more natural with a lot less anomalies, anomalies than Bitcoin. Clearly, something is happening. I'm going to show you another chart. Here's another chart. This is Bitcoin. And here's another view. I want you to remember this pattern very closely. Now I'm going to show you another chart. And this is XRP. Look familiar? Long uptrend, down one, two, three, and up. Back down, just a little bit. In the trading community, we've known this a lot. We've known that Bitcoin has been reflecting the major movements of all major price scales for many cryptocurrencies. If Bitcoin is like in a good mood, then the rest of the cryptos will be in a good mood. If they're set up, what some of them are even set up in very similar ways, they will actually help be a catalyst to move a weaker currency to its targets. And then as it hits those targets, it will also relax on the days that Bitcoin relaxes. If a currency is gonna go up, it's almost like it's waiting for Bitcoin to move up and then it moves up on those same and similar days. Bitcoin, and now XRP. So we see lots of similarities. Both broke through the trend lines here. So we're able to watch XRP and get a big indication about what XRP will do based on what the markets will do. And we find what the markets are do, will do as a whole are often dictated by what Bitcoin is doing as a whole. So I often use Bitcoin as a major indicator and I watch for major trend reversals and that gives ample time because if Bitcoin is in a bad mood, it can bring down the whole table. And if the whole table falls, then even the strongest ones like XRP until there's a full decoupling will continue to, to crash. People look at Bitcoin like it's a market sentiment, but wait, what if I told you that there was more? 
now that we know that Bitcoin has is, is like a puppet itself, its strings are being primarily pulled by USDT. We can see that as I showed you from my other chart, but I'm now going to give you a more thorough investigation into these matters. What I'm about to show you is a series of charts, not every example, but just a few examples for you to take a look and see for yourself if we can find any type of anomalies. I'm going to show you a new chart, not XRP, not Bitcoin, but I will be showing you Bitcoin side by side. I want you to see the similarities for yourself.